Good afternoon, folks. I'm Dave Thompson. I am the Education Director for the ACE Academy of Cleaning Excellence and President of the Green Clean Institute. This afternoon, my guest speaker's topic is, well, something a little bit different. You can never solve a why to problem with a how to solution. So, you know, come on back after this message and we'll learn a little bit more about that subject. Dave from Orlando, Florida and the ACE Learning Center at Gym Supply. It's Beyond Clean with Dave, a weekly broadcast for professionals in environmental health services around the world. Your host is David Thompson, Director of Education for Gym Supply, and his mantra is, I am a janitor and I save lives. And now let's listen to Beyond Clean with Dave and today's guest at the ACE Learning Center in sunny downtown Orlando. There's three words on which I focus on each and every Friday afternoon. Those three words, healthy, positive, and proactive. Now, before I get started with our show today, we have a new feature that we started last week. It's our live chat. If you're on YouTube and watching us right now, it's just to your right hand side, put any question, comment, or thought that you might have. And we'll try to answer that as we go through the day. Now, today my guest is calling in from somewhere up in St. Louis, and he's been a colleague of mine for a number of years. I have respect for those who are ready, willing, and capable of standing up and demonstrating their own beliefs. John and I, we, well, you know what, we've been able to do that on a number of occasions. He's here to talk to us about some of his foundation principles. So let's welcome John Norwatt from somewhere up there in St. Louis area. John, where are you at today? I am in the heart of St. Charles County. I live in a town of O'Fallon, Missouri. So we're just west of St. Louis proper, but uh, you know, uh, still right there in the heart of the action. Right, okay. so. Let's uh, let the audience know who you are. I know you, they don't. So tell them sure. a little bit about who you are and why we're listening. Sure, well, I've been in the industry since, since about 2000. Um, I've, I've been in a number of different capacities and different roles in this industry. Uh, worked for distribution. I worked as a manufacturer's rep where I you know, had a tremendous amount of exposure to various types of chemistries and equipment and different uh, market segments. and and uh, really started to gain a knowledge at a very granular level from a scientific standpoint almost. And now, of course, I work for the Betco Corporation, which for anyone who uh, is not familiar with Betco, we're a manufacturer of, of cleaning products, dilution control systems, uh, green chemistries, floor care, uh, odor management, skin care, cleaning equipment. So we kind of cover the gamut in terms of facility maintenance. Okay, we're not here to talk about cleaning products, but we're here to talk right. about how to make a business or how to make an operation successful. And I think you've got some insights about this how-to question and the whys, and I don't know, I'm confused, so help me. <laughs> well, I'll try and unpack it for you. All right. no, uh, so yeah, our number one goal really, bottom line is both for you, Dave, and, and, and ourselves uh, in this industry is to help other people, other people be successful. Right. Oh, yeah. And so I, I read a lot. And a, a, probably last summer, I read a book called The Secret Code to Success, written by a gentleman by the name of Noah St. John. And he coined the, the quote that you mentioned earlier, why you can you can never solve a why to problem with a how to solution. And, okay. and so, boy, so this was somebody else's quote, not yours, not mine. No, I'm not that smart, Dave. So um, <laughs> I, but I tell you, that, that quote hit me square between the eyes, and, and it really kind of got me thinking. In fact, I keep it on, a po on, a, on an index card right here, and I, as a general reminder of, you know, before I jump to conclusions, I need to kind of unpack things a little bit. Right. And, and so, um, you know, in a broader context as it relate, relates to our industry, so often do people just, I guess, we, we all kind of relate rely on the status quo or conventional wisdom. Right. And, and it really helps to kind of, I guess, I challenge folks to question their assumptions, to question the status quo and, and things of that nature. And, and rather than, you know, what society is today, we want to just hack ourselves to that instant gratification. So we jump to a how-to solution under the presumption that we know why we're looking for that answer to begin with. Oh, yeah. We see that all the time. I guarantee you. People come in here and they go, I, have an, I need an answer. And I don't mm -hmm. even know what the question is yet. How do I give right. you an answer? And I think they don't even know what the question is. They're just looking for the solution because I got to do it now. I got to get on to the next job. But 
so many times that's what also kicks them in the rear. Right, exactly. And I know we're kind of speaking in vague terms right now. So let me kind of explain as it pertains to our industry, kind of what I mean behind all this. Okay. If, 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 so the first question I often ask when I'm working with folks is what is your cleanable square feet? And, and sometimes when I ask that question, it's not because I'm so much interested in their answer, right. but whether or not they know the answer to that question. Well, because that's, that because tells, the, the, you, you need to find out if they're on, on the same page with you. Right. And, and we, we're showing a picture of a big bunch of lobbies, three different lobbies. And, right. and if you don't know how to articulate what you're cleaning, how do you know if what you're finding is the right thing? Well, that's just it. So if you don't know the basic of what your cleanable square feet is, then I would ask, how do you know how long it's supposed to take to clean your building? Or how, how do you know how many people you need? Or what kind of equipment you need, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But it goes beyond just knowing your cleanable square feet. It goes to understanding your cleanable square feet. Right. So what are the various substrates that you're responsible for? So you can go into any facility, kind of like the, the examples of those pictures there, you're gonna have multiple substrates. You're gonna have carpet, you're gonna have a VCT, you're gonna have polished concrete or terrazzo, you may have tile and grout or wood floor, port epoxy. Okay, you know, so film. Let, let, let's throw in that new one, the LVT, and very few people have it. And when you get that in there, now that's a whole nother picture. We can't treat it the same way we did the others. That's exactly right. And so now you have to take everything else into consideration and almost say, well, gosh, I need a different cleaning process for this. That's gonna, that could potentially slow up my whole uh, my whole program here. So, right. and so if you don't understand how many square feet you've got of one or the other, and just because you know the square footage of the building doesn't mean you that's know how not much is cut cleaning. It. Yeah, because right. you're not cleaning the whole building. Exactly, exactly. And so that's where we can help come in um, and, and, and help kind of break all that down because you also have to consider the above the floor surfaces. And, and depending on what environment you're in, uh, you may have various protocols in place that dictate how those things are cleaned. So we need to also understand what's my routine or daily work, what's my detail work, and what's my project work, and what's the life cycle, and, and how does that look in terms of what I'm able to accomplish in a given point of time. So what we're able to do is, is leverage some tools that we have available um, in, in identifying all of that and and you know, we can use an inspector platform that helps kind of audit things from the from the very beginning. Right. And then and then push that out to the next level, which we call our estimator program, which which aids in things like, you know, actually workloading the building, identifying, you know, specifically what your square feet is, the, the kinds of equipment that you have. Um, how long applications should take you based on that information. And what we really want to try and do is come down and, and find out, okay, we're, we're going to, you know, use kind of a common term in business today, and that's called benchmarking. Well, we want to use... And what you're talking about here is something like a conversation I had yesterday morning. This gentleman comes in and he says, I want you to help me with what I should bid on a, on a job. And I'm like, why are you talking about what do you want to bid? Do you know this? Do you know this? And that's why right. I have a whole class, a whole day long class on how to bid the job and then how to workload it. And so what you're talking right. about is these tools that we have now on our electronic devices mm -hmm. that can help us benchmark all of these things, put it into a format. Because if I don't know these tools and don't put them in the right pattern, um, the outcome is not going to be a successful business. Well, that's right. That's exactly right. And, and, and so you have to know the realities of what you're doing of what you're dealing with before you can start to slap how to solutions on on addressing it right and and so and so uh what it really boils down to is when we're when we're if we feel like you know we're always stretched thin when it comes to our budget or when it comes to time or both um when you when you come together on encapsulating your labor and cost of materials based on the best ways to approach your facility, you can come down to a, a cost to clean per square foot. Well, so where do they get this information? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I've got it here, you've got it. I think what we're saying is they need to look for support from somebody. Absolutely, yeah. So I'm not suggesting that you need to go find a Betco representative or that you need to uh, go it alone. You maybe that's a you know all this information we're talking about can actually seem daunting to some people thinking oh my gosh you know how am I going to get my hands on all this information? 
ask yourself who are your distributor partners that you work with right or better yet who are the manufacturer partners that you work with um that that they have these they have access to these tools and can make them available and works by work by your side and you know that's the kind of quite honestly that's the type of partnership that distribution and folks like myself are looking for. Right. We don't want to be vendors. We want to be support. We want to be vendor partners. And there's okay, a difference so, in that relationship. Yeah, yeah. So John, you use the word vendor. There's a difference between right. being a vendor and you just going in and getting your mops and brooms and toilet paper from home and a partner right. that's actually working with you with this education to make sure you're a successful right. operation. So that's right. Uh, let's get back to that original why two problem. I'm really interested sure. in that. So there, you know, there's a lot of different why twos and, and, you know, you had a gentleman, uh, on, on your show, I guess it was back in February. His name is right. Mo Bashar and he, he obviously, he's the owner and principal owner of, of, uh, unlimited building maintenance. Right. And I watched that episode and, you know, there's a guy who gets it because number one, he could tell you exactly the amount of square feet that he's, that his business is responsible for number one. Oh, yeah. But, you know, we've, we've up to this point, we've talked about various types of substrates and how to maintain things. But he, he, his, his, his defining principle is all about people. And that's a, that's a huge variable to keep in mind because, you know, our people consist of our employees, right? Our, our, our labor, our staff, um, making sure that we're, they're working, um, in a safe environment. And, well, that's, and that's, people, people, our, that's the people I call our internal customers. And he understands right. that those are, those are his first customers and he has to take care of that customer first. We want to put them in positions for success because let's face it, this industry is known for having a tremendous amount of turnover. Oh, yeah. And I think if I remember uh, Mo's uh, statistic for his company, it's around 5%, which is way ahead of the bell curve. Yeah, when, was but you, he, when, when did you ever hear that, John? Uh, you don't, you don't hear that. Right. And so when you do, you remember it. And that's what you're pointing out. Absolutely. You remembered right. that person because of that, probably just that one thing. Exactly. But then he also takes it a step further. And I think this really makes it easy for him in terms of how he makes business decisions and, and develops processes and programs and, and what, what tools and equipment to buy, because he's also knows why he's cleaning. And that's for the people who work in the, in the buildings that he's responsible for, for cleaning, oh, yeah. you know, Asthma, as you as you may know, Dave, is a growing epidemic, and a lot of the things that we do in our role and our in our jobs have a direct effect, um, either adversely or positively, in terms of creating a healthier environment for those people who are sensitive to those to those types of things, like dust and mold and 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 you know, um, overuse of things with masking agents and perfumes and fragrances. Well, and one of the things that you'll see on Mo's website, and it's not just a phrase that he th puts up there for marketing, he really believes it. He says, health is job one. And that doesn't mean just from his, his own internal, it means his external customers that are paying the bill for everybody. He, I mean, everybody in that organization, his clients and everything, all are part of that team. And so it's not just those, the facility managers get this and they're helping to implement the changes which right. I think is probably one of your other points. I may be getting well, that. Yeah, no, but that, no, you, you, that, that was going to be my next point in that, you know, people might be thinking, well, gosh, if you come in and help me benchmark a facility, um, you, you're just wanting to overturn the apple cart here. Well, not, no, we want to, we, I want to preface this by saying that what we hope to do is affirm that what you are doing is dialed in exactly to what makes right. sense for your facility. That you're but just let's not face making it, changes for the simple making changes. You're doing it for the right reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we don't want to make those changes if, if we agree that those changes are necessary. And that's the thing that we, we don't want to force anything upon people or tell people how to do their jobs or anything like that. We want to come to, you know, common ground here and say, listen, if we can agree that this is where some room for improvement is necessary, these are the things that we would advise in, in doing. Well, and, 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 and that's why people fail in this business and they have the turnover and they're losing accounts and they're putting accounts back on is because the changes they're making, not everybody understands what's going on. Right. So as long as that stream of communication is open and, and, tie, and, and connecting the dots about, okay, here are some, init some initial changes. This is what we've learned about our facility here recently. These are some changes that we need to make and why. And it's going to positively affect you know, our staff, our labor, our, our custodians, uh, housekeepers, et cetera, 
but it's also going to have a positive impact on, you know, depending on what environment we're in, the residents, the patients, the students, the faculty, the staff, right? Well, and, and, and I think the customers, if, if we as facility managers, uh, you know, managing a property like this, if we understand and we listen to the client, there's feedback that comes back from them as well as our internal clients. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, there's a there's a stewardship almost that starts to take place that when they observe positive changes, then they want to kind of join in the cause, right? Oh, yeah, and so, right. and then morale goes up, right? And then what happens? Well, maybe your turnover, you know, is reduced because people are, feel appreciated. They feel like they're in an environment that's conducive for success and not being put in positions for failure. Uh, things of that nature. So, so maybe this is why Mo has that low turnover rate is because everybody is in part of this feedback, well exchange be. of information. Right. Everybody knows. But now right. I, I think you know as well as I do, John, this isn't happening just because somebody flipped a switch and said, let's change it today. No. Well, no. Or, or is it? Or is it that somewhere along the line, management has to make that decision, flip the switch, but they had a lot of things went on before they did. And does it happen overnight? No, in fact, but you know, yeah, the man, the man, once we benchmark or do this facility survey exercise, let's say we we've identified some key areas where some potential changes need to need to occur. The one thing that management needs to also realize is that um, we all know that when change or the word change is, is mentioned um, sometimes people, you know that that it's human like that human in, that human instinct of fear kicks in, and we fear what we don't understand, right? Yeah, they and that's why they're up and they're going to go the other direction, and they're going to run, and anything you say is on dead ears. It's it's fight or flight mentality. That's just the human nature, right? And that's why the the whole communication thing is so important, and that we don't just implement a bunch of sweeping changes all at once. We have to take this, you know, incrementally. But that's where we're going is right, and so what management needs to realize is that. Resistance will be will will be there. So oh, yeah. Yeah. let's let's wrap our arms and minds around that notion. But how are we going to address it? Now, folks, if you don't have the resistance, be afraid because something else is going to happen, and that's when that mutiny thing happens. Because when everybody doesn't have a problem with it, there's something going on in the background, and it's going to come back and get you. So, you know, resistance is good because you can work through that, and the changes then have a solid foundation. But you've got to right. be ready to deal with those res that resistance as you make your changes. Right, right. And and really, it, the bottom line is is that the reason why we want to make any any changes is because, again, it goes back to what I said in the beginning. We're just here to help other people be successful. Bottom line, you know, we have either a combination of three main priorities, and I speak for probably anyone in the audience, and, and of course you and me, Dave, uh, as that's. We all are trying to reduce our expenses. Right. Just for some of us, we're all trying to increase sales and revenue. Right. And for all of us, we're probably trying to find ways to increase efficiency or profitability. Well, those are the and three results, right? Those are the thing. That's just it. That's what keeps a lot of people up at night. And it, it, if we can help make changes, it's in um, in the best interest of those combination of those priorities. Well, John, so, it, it doesn't look like we had any questions. So I guess okay. uh, maybe as you were watching, um, you know, maybe uh, we answered all your questions for you. John, do you have any other final words before we go? I know that, uh, you know, everything that you're talking about here is something we talk about here at the Academy on a regular basis. It's good to hear that this isn't just a local issue. This is an issue all over the United States. Oh, it's everywhere. And, and it's not just in our industry. It's, it's in our personal lives, right? You know, because you can go to Google and YouTube and you're going to find how to solutions from now to eternity. I knew on, you were going to bring that up. On, Wait on a minute. Any, I've got I, how to videos out there on YouTube. And now you're telling me. Well, but see, you explain why they need to find it first and then you put the answer out there. So that's oh, the okay. difference, right? Well, gee, thanks. But, I, I'm glad I'm doing it right, John. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, just I guess if if if. Folks are now starting to think in the audience about, gosh, what's my next step? Right. I would just go back to what I said earlier and, and think about who your suppliers are or your partners. And hopefully you have a partner that you lean on in, in, the, in our capacity and just ask them, hey, do you have tools available that can help me answer some questions about my facility and that can break it down and, into um, different, you know, into various 
details, like knowing my square feet and how much I have of this, that, and the other. And so I can really, you know, confirm whether or not that what we're doing is, is, is making sense. You know, John mentioned some different, uh, some good things here. We've been talking about it. I'm going to be at a conference. I'm going to be a speaker Monday, and then I'll be at the conferences on, I think it is Wednesday and Thursday here in central Florida. Uh, the uh, conference is called the reframe janitorial conference. It's going to answer some of those questions. We'll be there live. We're going to be talking about these issues, trying to help you with, you know, how do I find these answers? We're going to be showing you some technology. It goes right along with what you're saying, John. It's, I mean, thanks for the lead in to it. Uh, yeah. I appreciate having you on with me. Uh, sure. Thank you. I appreciate you. our time together. And you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm going to look forward to having you back on the show some other time. That would be great. I look forward to it. Thank you. So uh, tell all the friends up there in St. Charles, I said hi. And uh, for those who have asked from time to time, you can find our classes on the gym website. That's gymsupply.net. Now go to the education button. Uh, click on that. You'll find our live classes here that we have in Orlando, and we have three other locations, so make sure you're looking at the right location. Go to my Facebook page. Uh, please share and like my page. I know I've got a bald head. It may not be the best, but go ahead and share and like me anyway. Uh, if you haven't got all your questions answered by that time, go to my website. That is beyondcleanwithdave.com. Got more information there. And we also archive these programs for you. If you need to send a uh, question directly to me, my email, beyondclean at gymsupply.net. So I guess until next Friday afternoon, 1 p.m. right here, live from Orlando, I'm Dave Thompson. Keep changing your future. Keep those changes healthy, positive, and proactive. And remember my mantra, I am a janitor and I save lives. Hang on for just a minute. I'll be right back to talk to you about what's going to be on our calendar for next Friday, right after this credit. You have been listening to Beyond Clean with Dave and his guest. Sharing what you learn with others is what turns knowledge into professional development. Live classes are hosted each week at one or more of our four locations in Central Florida. Remember, janitors save lives. Be sure to put us on your schedule to watch next week as we present another broadcast of Beyond Clean with Dave. Okay, so this, this Friday, I'm going to be talking with Cliff, who is going to be here in studio with me, and he's going to be talking to us about what it takes to be an expert about teaching, explaining, and listening. I wonder which one of those I do the best. I guess I'm going to learn something, too. So anyway, be sure to tune in next Friday afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern, right here on that smart device that you always have in your pocket. Thanks for watching.